Hey guys, welcome back to another Default Cube CG Matter tutorial, and today I wanted to talk about how to move animated objects, meaning if you have something that's animated, how do you move that whole system while still keeping that animation, but just, you know, moving it to a different location. And honestly, you would not believe how many times this gets asked in uh, various contexts, and there's a lot of questions on Stack Exchange for something that's honestly pretty simple, so... It's going to be a pretty fast tutorial, but it's going to be a useful one for people who didn't know this trick. So, first of all, let's go full screen so you can see everything. And what we're going to do is just make a random animation, because this applies to any kind of animation. So, uh, let's say we take our cube, we're going to keyframe our location, and then let's say that 30 frames later, we can have this end at 30 frames, uh, we can have this go up, right? meaning that our animation looks like this. It doesn't matter if it looks like this or if it has like a linear interpolation, doesn't matter, any kind of animation. Well, if we wanna move this and we want it to still move vertically, but we wanna move it like over here and have it play, you're gonna notice that it just goes right back to where it was because of the keyframing. And you're like, okay, whatever, I'll just move it over here, add a keyframe so it has to go there. But then what you get is this new animation because you've just put a point in between. So how do you fix it? Well, the way you fix it is uh, when you have your object selected, in this case, the cube, make sure you're in the object properties. And under all this transform information, which is what you've usually been editing, there's something called delta transform. And th these are the values we actually wanna be messing around with. So again, currently our animation looks like this, but we can add some delta x location, let's say. So like that, so moving it over on the x axis. And now you can see that it's playing, same animation, but just shifted over. And we can do that over here or with the Z axis. And the same kinds of principles also apply to rotation and scaling animation. So if instead our animation had a bit of rotation as well, so let's keyframe the rotation. And then on the last frame, add a bit of rotation again. So now our animation rotates as well. Well, we can still move it and it will still do the rotation. We can even add a bit of rotation like that, and it's still gonna rotate you know, in the same way. Basically, the word delta uh, in Greek, <laughs> I think Greek, uh, means change, right? So really what we're doing is taking something and just changing it, we're displacing it somewhere else, but it's still retaining all that information. So basically, the way you wanna think about using Blender, and a lot of people don't know this, is that the location of an object, so like right here, uh, and then it's moving up through the animation, uh, this true location of the object is not this location that we have over here or in the end property menu. It's this plus the delta transform. It just so happens that most of the time, all these values are set to zero, right? So it turns out to be the same thing most of the time, but you can always, you know, do some, any kind of delta transform. And yeah, I mean, you could also do this for any kind of character that you rig and animate and you have this animation, but you want to displace it somewhere else. So there you go, Delta Transform, uh, Blunder's biggest secret that there have been an embarrassing amount of questions about, but I thought it'd be important to talk about. Hopefully you found this helpful. See you guys.